Peace. Greetings, everybody. I'm Larry, the Pinbug Guy from Fort Worth, Texas. And welcome to the Pinbug Chat number 61. Peace. Today I want to talk a little about, about pins, nibs, some of my carries that I, I use daily because I uh, tuned up the nibs uh, where... I like to use them more, and they're more enjoyable for me. And then I want to talk a little bit about the 14K Vintage Pro Nib versus the 18K Go Nib Present. So, I will be shooting questions out to the viewers out there, and I want to get your input as well, because that's really important. The reason for a lot of these questions that I have been answering and asking is because, believe it or not, I've got quite a bit of email in the last month asking me these questions that I'm about to uh, reveal today. And, you know, remember, this is just my views, and you guys can have your views. So, nobody get uptight. Everybody, you know, keep sane and uh, be courteous and uh, peace and love. Can you dig it? Hello to Ink Guy and Oscar. Hey, Ink Guy, Oscar. All right, first of all, I'm going to talk about two of my favorite pins. You know me by now. I like large pins. They are my heart. So... Here are some Monteverdi Sequoia fountain pens. And I think they're just really some great fountain pens. Hello, David C. Hey, David C. Welcome, brother. I really like these pens. It just screams Larry. It's my thing. These are these, these I really do like. Uh, and when I first got these pens... They wrote okay, but not enough to my liking. I had to send one back to Yapa to uh, have the nib worked on a little bit, and they did correct it. But still, for me, I like wet pens. And the question I was asked, do I have all my nibs wet? No. Uh, a few here and there, but I, I try to keep a main portion of them like they are. Uh, but for me, if I want to use a pen more, it's got to be what I like. So let me start with the blue one. What I like about the Monteverdi Sequoias, they come with a black nib, and I think that's really sharp looking. That's uh, a nice looking nib. It's really strack. I like that. And it blends in well with the pen. I like the size of the pen. It really is nice. And uh, I like to post it. Sometimes I use it, post it. Sometimes I don't. I guess it just depends on my mood. So, oh, really? Uh, oh, is he talking to someone? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hello, Brian. Uh, so... Uh, on this pen, I just had it sitting in my uh, pen case and didn't use it a lot. And I was really missing to use this pen. So what I did was I pulled it out and I worked on the nib a little bit and I made it wetter. Hello, David L. And what I used was the brass sheets right here. I've already cut this down size, but I use my brass sheets and I get in there and uh, and the time and uh, floss it in between. So you got to be careful. You don't want to overdo it because you can uh, damage your times. But uh, it worked real well and uh, I got great ink flow. I love the wetness and I'm a happy camper and that's what counts. And I'm saying this because... 
Each of us fountain pen users have to be happy with the pens we use. If you don't use your pens enough, you need to find out, well, why am I not liking that pen? And I think then you got to do your homework and find out, is it the nib that's causing it? Is it the ink? What? And go from there. So I have this to my liking now, and uh, I'm glad I finally got myself to do this. So that's one. Okay, my other sequoia. I really do love it. I did a, something a little bit different. I don't like changing out nibs too often, but I said, you know what? Why not? It's my pen. Uh, I'm not hurting the pens. I want to put in a nib that I that I enjoy, and a lot of you are not going to enjoy the nib, but I'll tell you heads up. I like it. Why? I, it just works for me, you know, something that fits together. So, what I put in this pen, the nib is a noodler. And it works really well for me. It's got some great ink flow coming out. Nice nib. I love the way it writes. And uh, two of my favorite pens. So it's about time I have said to myself, you know what, I need to think about what I like, what I like to use, what makes me happy, what I enjoy to write with the most. So these two, those are it. So those are my two of my pen carries. And then another one is going to be is my Pilot Justice 95. Love the pen. It took me a couple of years to bite the bullet, but I'm glad I did. For me, it works great. Really like it. Fine nib now, and I'm not a fine nib person, but this one, I love. Another one that I really like is the Aurora Optima Flex Set. Limited edition, I got. Tell a little story about this one. I don't really care for the, uh, the body of the pen. The color, it's a nice color. I don't know, it's just something that just didn't grab my attention. But I wanted the nib. That's what I was after. So I got it. And, you know, I used it a couple of times. It was okay. I didn't get a big wall factor from it. And then I put it up. And then I... Got it out, did it again, then I put it up. So, I took it out again. And I'm starting to feel this pen. Sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but for me, sometimes I, I don't always take a liking immediately to something. It may take me a while to uh, digest it. And then I have to regroup and give it some thought and retry. So, it's a flex nib. And it really is a nice flex nib. This is a true flex nib. And I'm learning how to flex. You know, I, I, I like to, uh, to write a lot. And I think this morning I must have spent about 45 minutes teaching myself how to flex correctly and how to write better. Because if anybody needs it, yo, me. So, nice pen, and I'm glad I got it. Took me an arm and a leg and maybe a, a toenail, but, you know, I got it. Um... And a few more others. The Noodler Ink. It's a small pen. And as you well know, I'm not really into small pens. It's slim. But I've taken a liking to this. I really like the color, the feel. I have to post it or I couldn't use it at all. And it's still rather small. But I think... Well, it works fine for me just like this, but it's so thin. But 
it's what's under the hood that I'm attracted to mostly. I do I do like the nib on it. It writes real well for me. It works well for me. So if it works well for you, use it. You may have one of your buddies or somebody else say, you know, that, that sucks. I don't like that. That's ugly. Or, you know, I, I don't like the way they write. Well, that's cool. I respect that. Tell them. But if you like it, you flow with it. And then I have the Lombi also. Hello to JJ. And uh, this is that vibrant pink. Now, I love the col color of the Lombi All-Star. This is cool. Cool color. And uh, for me, the Lombi works real well. I, I like the way the grip is made. And uh, it just feels right in my hand. And it has a medium dip, so I'm a happy camper. And then another one is, uh, that's uh, yeah, Lombi All-Star. So here's another Lombi All-Star. Love the color. And this one I have an oblique medium nib. And I do like obliques. And Judge, I said the uh, All-Star goes with your bow tie well. Yes. Da -da 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 -da. Next is the uh, Darling Beautiful Noodlers Conrad. This is the beautiful blue swirls in it. It's just a great writer. I just love this pen to pieces. So I tell myself, if you love this pen to pieces, Larry, why haven't you been using it more? Good question. Uh, you know, I think uh, if people have too many pens, uh, they, they may tend to, to forget about that pen and get caught up in other pens. And that probably is what has happened to me. But what I do is that I, I ink them up and I'll write till there's no more ink in them, and then I wash them out. But then what I want to do is I want to grab some of them pins back and, and put them back in my rotation with some different pins because I, I want to use them more. And last but not least is the Noodler's Ahab. In fact... Believe it or not, this was my first Noodler's pen to ever buy. And here it is today. And the second one was a blue one that uh, I don't have in circulation yet. But uh, I, I guess I just like Noodler's pens, right? Some people don't like them. I like them. Yes, I've heard that they've had this or that problem, but... I haven't had any problems with them, so, you know, I'm happy, I'm satisfied, the great price that I can afford. And for me, it's all about affordability. Oh, yeah, I do have some higher-end pens, but it takes me phew, some time to get there. So, any comments to you guys? Do you have any particular pens that you like to use a lot, but you don't use them a lot because the nib isn't to your liking if so what's wrong with that nib and if you like that pen well enough why don't you have it uh tuned to benefit your liking and enjoy that pen more uh ink guys asking if you're uh with your comments if you're responding to a lot of negativity that you've been getting uh yes and no some of it yes uh I, I really get crucified on this end, believe it or not, on some of the pins I show. Uh, and that's okay, because that won't stop me. I'll continue to show them. Uh, JJ says, uh, doesn't put a lot of uh, use into the Platinum President because of the nib. See, and that's one pin. I want to get the plat uh, Platinum President. It's a big pin, right, JJ? I want that. I have the Platinum uh, 3776 medium dip. I love it. Just love it, love it, love it. Okay. But I want that president because it's a larger pen, if I'm correct. Uh, so that's one on my list. Plus the platinum music nib is another on my list. So any more feedback on the question I just threw out there? Give y'all a minute to think. Put your thoughts together. And share. It's larger than the 3776. Cool. That's what I thought. 
uh, David uh, C. C, the biggest issue with the president is the extra, extra stiff nib on it versus the 3776 nib. Uh, that, this question to you, David C, then, it's an extra stiff nib. Does that matter what nib size it is, if it's a fine, medium? Are you saying in general? If I could find a used one, I'd buy it. In general. Okay. Uh, JJ says they're all pretty much stiff. Okay. I hear you. And I do have some a few stiff gold nibs, and they're okay. Not not great, but they're okay. The president has short, stubby tines compared to the 3776. Okay. Well, all I can tell you is that uh, 3776... For me, that's just a cream puff. I love it. I, I really, really do like it. And, you know, I'm, I'm so pin involved that I get excited when I use cool pins. They don't have to be expensive pins, but something that I enjoy to write with, uh, even on a daily basis. I, I get a real thrill, a real kick inside, because it's a fountain pen, and this is what we do, right? We're all pen enthusiasts on here. We love fountain pen. That's our heart. That's our passion. That's our drive because we love fountain pen. That's what we do. So, you know, I, I get a thrill out of it. Uh, Judge just says you might like it more as a stubborn or, or an italic. And uh, David C. says just wait till you try Nakaya. Well, isn't the Nakaya a more expensive one? And there's a Nagatoga that I've been hearing a lot about. I, I believe that's how you pronounce it it's really wet so that has got my interest all right now let's move on and feel free to continue with the comments if you like uh they are 3776 nibs with extra special work to them okay so, let's talk about vintage gold versus the gold from today. This is the Mont Blanc 149, 1990 vintage with a 14K gold medium nib. And in this hand, I apologize. This is the king of pins. Duh. This is the king of pins. Uh, and then this is the... Let me make sure I'm right here. Because I thought I got it. Yeah, this is the Mont Blanc 149. 18K. And this is the... 21k let's talk about these two first and then we'll go to vintage i jumped the gun uh, oscar has the question what would define vintage how old do you think it would have to be before it'd be considered vintage well this is a 1990 uh, i'm sorry the mont blanc that i keep referring to is a 1990 and that's considered vintage i was told so so 1990 2000 yep 2010 yeah yeah david David hit it on the money. 20 to 25. Yeah, we got 20 a couple to of... 25, yeah. Uh, even the 1950s, et cetera. So, uh, this 21K versus the 18K, which is your preferred nib and why? Why would you prefer the one you choose over the one you didn't choose? That's a question that I like to hear comments about. The 21K Sailor King of Pins, which is a magnificent nib. Look at that beautiful nib. That is one heck of a nib. And it writes extremely well. JJ prefers the vintage 14K. Okay, so 
While y'all keep the questions coming in, we'll go to that in a minute. As I look. And hello to Jan. Or is it John? I thought I grabbed my Mont Blanc earlier, and I did not. Shame on me. But, all right. So we have two here right now. The Sailor King of Pen. It's a great pen. I love the pen, and I'm glad I got it. And here's the Mont Blanc 149, 18K. Love the pen. I'm glad I got this one. Which do you prefer? 21K, Sailor Nib, 18K, Mont Blanc Nib. And why? That is the question. Give you a few seconds here to put some thoughts together. Uh, I want to see the nib on those. Okay. Here is the nib on the king of pins. I'm trying to get it in focus for you. Okay. And this is the Mont Blanc 149, 18K. And I'll put them together in a second. And here they are together. Sailor is on my right. And John says those are beautiful nibs. Uh, JJ says if it's pre-1980, he'd say the Mont Blanc. Before that, he'd go with the Sailor. Not not before that, after that, sorry. After that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this uh, Sailor, it, for me, it's just a extremely nice writer. It's the kind of pen that uh, when I run out of ink, I'll kind of sneak it back in rotation and give it another fill. Shouldn't tell anybody that. That's a secret between the king of pens and myself. So, Alright, now <clears throat> let's move on to vintage <clears throat> versus present. Again, here's the 149 18K medium gold nib. And here is the 149 Vintage 1990 14K Low Medium Dip. And that's the nib. Hello to Luke. And I must say, this is one awesome nib on this pen. And for me, I have to say, and I'm going to say it, I was digging the 14K gold nib better than the 18K nib. It had more bounce. It was springier. It just wrote better. It, it just it just was a better nib, I thought. And I have a lot of other people that prefer the vintage over the new ones. I can understand why. Uh, Luke says that the that Sailor King of Pens is on his grail list. Uh, David C. says he likes his Montblanc nibs 18 karat from pre-1970. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I uh, wrote with yours a bit, didn't I, David? I think one day at the, uh, when we got together once, I think. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I like vintage Montblanc uh, 14K nibs. I like that. So, Anybody have any more feedback? Uh, some other pins on my list. Uh, the Omos 
Paragon, is that what it, how you pronounce it? Uh, that's one I've been thinking about. Of course, the Platinum Music Nib, the Platinum President. Um, well, there was a couple more. I don't have my list with me. But uh, those are a few that I like. On the Music Nibs, this is uh, feedback from you guys. I've seen a music nib with a with a fine music nib, and I've seen it with a broad music nib, with a B. Feedback. And yeah, while you're waiting on that, uh, Mont Blanc from the 1990s, according to Luke, who had them in his store, were uh, uh, poor quality. <laughs> although the nibs were good. Well, I tell you what, uh, th this 1990 rocks. Super rocks. Super rocks. And uh, David C. says correct on the Paragon. And uh, Inga says thanks for announcing ahead on YouTube when you're going live. Cool. In fact, I can recommend this vintage 1990 myself. I would recommend it. I'm a true believer in this vintage 1990. That's not saying that there may be some other 1990 Mont Blanc out there that may not be as good, but that can be in, uh, with any pen uh, you get. You could uh, go out and get the King of Pens, and I recommend this, highly recommend this pen as well. But you may find the pen that you get may not be as good as I said it was. And JJ is saying, I think we're referring to the Mont Blanc, that they were a very good pen company before they came as status symbol. Well, that I have to look at and say, yeah. Uh, people, and not everybody, but a lot of people I know like to buy status symbol pens to be recognized in the community, especially in the fountain pen community. They want to be the elite. So they tend to get those status fountain pens. And that's cool if that's your thing, but to me, it's not all about status symbols. It's about what Larry likes and what I can afford. Uh, I'm not ashamed of any of my pens. I even love my little Jin Howes and my heroes. You know, they're, they're cool pens. Uh, other people just totally just like these pens. They just can't say enough negative things about them. And that's cool, I guess. I mean... I, I don't like anybody's pens. Uh, I'm not going to prejudge anybody because of whatever pens they use. I'm not going to judge them. That's not my thing. Um, if you like whatever kind of pen you like, more power to you. And JJ agrees with you. And Oscar says the Lamy 2000 has been around for 50 years, untouched on design and features. I do have the Lamy 2000. Mm -hmm. And that's for another day. So, uh, any other comments on the vintage Go Nib versus today 18K Nibs? Uh, guessing that uh, that Mont Blanc made some changes on their acrylic at the at that time. Okay. I, I do know pens can. Really good pricing nowadays. Um, will it ever change? Probably not. I, I think Aurora was the one that's gone down on price. And that's a good thing. Because, you know, their prices were way up there. I said, wow. So, I think for, for the Aurora I got was about almost six bills. And that, that's quite a bit of change for it. Um... Uh, for the Mont Blanc uh, that I got, uh, it was like almost a thousand dollars. And I always told myself, I am never going to spend that kind of money on a fountain pen. But guess what? I did. So, and you know what? I I am so glad I did it. But again, I I didn't do it for a status symbol. I did it for me. 
when you're out and about and you have a pocket, do you ever put your pens in your pocket or do you always carry them in a pen case? For me, either way, like, I, like I'm carrying all these pens in my pen case and I may have one or two still in my pocket. Why is that? So I can have an easy uh, reach to pull one out if I need to take a, a note down. So that's how I roll sometimes. Sometimes I may have to put it up in here a little bit. I don't have pockets, so. Well, okay. I guess we covered what I was going to talk about today. I was hoping to get more people on, but it uh, didn't happen. Um, uh, where'd it go? Uh, JJ says, uh, usually does pocket polos, and depending on a pen, it'll go in the pocket. Uh, Ink Guy uh, has always has a, has a brass We Like Alpha in the pocket. And uh, let's see. Sorry, are you saying you do or you don't like the, the Delike pen? That one? Oh, the, okay, a Delike brass pen. And uh, someone asks, is that a new Delike that you have? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and I already did a review on it. I'll probably post it tomorrow. Uh, now, this nib has an extra fine nib. And I'll just give you a, a heads up on the review. I wouldn't impress with the nib at all. The nib is horrible. And yes, I'd use many extra fine nibs, so it's not my first rodeo. And I let the seller know, and here's what the seller asked. Go ahead. Uh, well, David C. says he keeps a non-sun damageable pen in his pocket when he's outside. JJ likes the bent nibs for the delikes. Yeah. I'm going to get to that. So the seller said, uh, well, have I tried uh, different uh, inks on the nib? Yes, I've tried different inks on the nib. Okay. Uh, also, I was uh, asked a question like, are you sure you got plenty of ink in there? Yes, I got plenty of ink. I said, sir, it's just the problem is that the nib is not any good, really. It was so bad it tore up the paper. So, uh, but anyway, other than that, it's it's a neat looking pen. You know, it reminds me of the Kaveco. Yeah, that's what David is saying. It says it looks a lot uh, too much like a Kaveco. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Oscar has uh, an OS Hemingway uh, that he's looking at. Do you have a brown ink that you would recommend for that? Uh, yeah, I, I like, let's see, uh, let me get my book out. Yeah, I, I do have some cool browns that I like. I like the Diamine Chocolate Brown, a nice, true brown. Yeah, John likes that Diamine Chocolate also. That's really, for me, a true brown. Uh, another good brown is the Robert Orchard Cafe Primo. That's that's pretty decent. Uh, let me see if I have anything else that would come close to that. Uh, those are the main two that really sticks stick out that are my favorites so far. We've also got a recommendation for Noodler's Brown. Yeah. Uh, he's also looking at uh, hazelnut brown and uh, Monteverde brown sugar. Okay. So. And JJ says uh, on the Delike uh, that you know, he has two extra fine nibs that have no tipping material on them and was like using a saber to slice cheese. That's not good at all. <laughs> you know, I, I do need to get a uh, the bent nib. Is it a Fidu, uh, Fude. Fude nib. Uh, 
if I can find one uh, for it because those nibs are, are pretty cool. But uh, this is really a, a, a huge disappointment. Uh, I've checked out some other reviews. How some of people like them, some don't. Uh, I like the pen. Um, I just don't like the nib. I don't like it at all. And uh, I'm hearing that uh, however they have the pen uh, painted, that uh, if you use a ammonia cleaner or um, was it ammonia or something, that it, it will take the paint off or it will make the paint go to a lighter color. So, but you know, it is a pretty cool little pen. Too bad the nib sucks. So, bummer. But this pen was like $14.99. So, you know, I I like my Caveco. That, that's my best pocket pen, I think, that I, I really do dig is my Caveco. They're, they're pretty cool. You know, I've got a few Cavecos. Uh What I need to get, and I've been saying for the last two years, is a uh, uh, converter for them. So they're they're a decent pen. I like them so. Uh, Have you uh, tried Gentle Blue and Diamond Majestic Blue? Yes, I uh, Gentle Blue. It's okay. Diamond. What was it? Majestic blue. Yeah, that was okay. Uh, I I have them somewhere in my other color chart. Uh, it was okay. It just didn't do enough for me. I've tried the diamond velvet, uh, diamond blue velvet. I like that a lot. One of my favorite blues. Uh, a new blue that I totally am in love with. Totally am in love with is the. Uh, new one that came out, uh, the uh, KWZ Hawaii Blue. Marvelous, beautiful, luscious blue ink. I can't say enough good about it. That, that's one that I have to go easy on the ink. It's not a cheap bottle of ink. It's like 40 bucks. But uh, it's one that I really like using a lot. A couple of different questions here. John asks, do you have any experience with the Custom 74 Soft Fine? No, I don't. None at all. And then were you, uh, JJ asks, were you able to figure out what converter fit the Wingsung 3007 Caveco Pocket Pen copy? You know, I have not even had time to go to that. So let me write myself a note. And what was the name of that one? Uh, the Wing Song 3007. 2007. Caveco Pocket Pen Copy. 2007 what? Uh, Caveco. Uh huh. What po about? Pocket Pen Copy. Okay. Um, I know I did one and it wasn't a copy, but it was the uh, mini pocket pen. Uh, was it a Wing Song? I forgot who it was to buy, but I didn't care for the pen at all. Um, but I'll have to check into that. And Ink Guy still didn't get his Hippo Noto. You still haven't got it? Yeah, like I said, I, I canceled mine because it was way too long and I was going nuts already. And uh, So that's okay. I'm cool. I've got my Tomo River paper notebooks. I love them and I'm cool. Have you uh, checked with, uh, oh, what's her name? I forgot her name, about your notebook yet. David got his, David C. on here got his already. And they're okay notebooks. Uh, JJ canceled uh, their Hipponoto as well. Uh, for me, the, the notebook works okay. Uh, I prefer the, the lighter, thinner Tomo River, uh, River paper, but... Uh, the uh, hippo, I would use it, you know, uh, for my uh, writing test, though. I, I would use that for that instead of my rhodium. Uh, yes, and they say they're still shipping out. Yeah, yeah. 
In fact, I, I checked, it was yesterday, and uh, I saw briefly on Facebook that they were uh, doing some more shipments out. Uh, so evidently, it was a home run for a hippo. Uh, JJ's going to stay with the cafe notebooks. That's me. Or the Seven Seas writer. That's me. I'm right there with you, JJ. Right there with you. Yep. Uh, and I won't leave home without it. Nope, I got them right next to me. And, uh, and in my pen pal letters, I use <clears throat> Tomo River paper. 99%. Every once in a while, I might throw in a life piece of paper. Okay, good night, John. Thank you for joining us. Good night, John. Peace, brother. Still talking about the Hipponoto between them. Yeah, I think I waited like eight to eleven months, somewhere in there. So, Whew. and what was that? Mine went away. So, well, okay, folks. I think that's going to wrap it up. I was hoping to get more uh, people on tonight, being a Friday night. Maybe they went out. I don't know. So we'll try it again later in the week. But don't forget, I'll be on Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to... And as I try to...